Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's video is random, uh, so I do apologize, I mean, really apologize, I mean, I just- FUCK! Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. And today's video is a bit random, so I'm sorry if it uh, is off a little bit. Um, but I just was looking at the weather models and I noticed that some things were interesting to me and some things that were popping out, you know, it caught my eyes attention and I, then I looked into it further and it's just kind of an interesting feature I want to show you. Uh, you know, nothing really too impactful, but it's, it's just something I wanted to share with you. Um, so also before we get into this video consider subscribing to this channel guys we're almost at 10,000 subscribers that is insane here at 10,000 subscribers holy cow uh you know if we could get to that uh anytime soon i don't care when that would be amazing uh so thank you so much for subscribing it really means a lot so we're looking at right now the gfs model and so the interesting feature i wanted to show you today is uh, to do with storms, actually, not really temperatures, uh, some, some interesting systems <clears throat> that may be taking its shape across the country, and you could see that right now, there it's very disorganized, and this is how it has been for the past couple of months. System here, system there, a cold front over here, but even if it was somewhat organized, it was just very, I mean, yes, severe weather did occur, because usually the more disorganized the system is, it tends to be, uh, get, you know, just more severe, it tends to be, uh, that's what I've realized in weather, it just tends to become a more, you know, it takes people by surprise. You can see right there, there's a little bit of spotty, there's a big one, obviously, uh, the further north you go, it's cooler up there, and, uh, they're kind of like almost a couple of months ahead up there by southern Canada, so the storms are equivalent to fall storms here. But if we go, so Friday, nothing spectacular. Notice how uh, there could be a uh, a a pretty large, actually, um, cluster of thunderstorms possibly on Sunday, August 11th. They're coming out of Nebraska and Kansas. This could actually be some severe weather, and uh, also a little bit of precip across the northwest. But uh, nothing too ridiculous. I mean, you can see the southeast spat is spatty spotty pop up showers. So that is typical of the southeast. They always see, they always see uh, showers that are uh, you know nothing too severe, but could definitely put out in a downpour or two. That's just the southeast, humid and warm, perfect environment. It's like the tropics down there. And, okay, this is where things get interesting. Here, so you can see that there's a low pressure associated with this. And this is actually fairly substantial. Look at this. We see, obviously, it's not well developed since this is, I mean, it's August, mid of August. So, we're slowly starting, getting into that season where we're going to be seeing bigger and bigger, well more organized systems coming along and less of the scattered severe weather stuff. And obviously, there's still going to be some severe weather, I mean, fall is considered the second severe weather season of the year, um, more than summer, actually, and that is because it's, again, the change of the seasons and the dynamics, the cool air and warm uh, air from the south meet yet again like they do in the springtime, but also in the springtime, there's big storms, in the fall, there are as well. Notice how there's a low pressure right there, and, and it's spinning counterclockwise, so it's uh, dragging up, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't even see a warm front on here at, at all because it's just way too weak. <clears throat> it's in the thousands, so that's barely low pressure. But uh, in terms of the severe weather, look, there's a nice little batch right there. And it's, uh, you know, that's only one. It, it drags down some rain up here. This, this green stuff, I'm not too sure. Uh, hopefully you could see that somehow. Right, it's green against green. Maybe I should change the color, especially for looking at pre -soap. Let's go to light blue. So, uh, see this stuff right here? That's probably not going to really uh, be too drastic. But there's another spot of precip, and there's another spot of precip. And if we were to put this in motion right now, hour 132, let's go to hour 138. Right, you could see that this actually kind of sticks together like notice how this uh, feature earlier on across sunday it develops really quickly robust but then it dies down that is very 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 common with severe weather and summer like systems where they quickly pawn up spawn up and then as quickly as they appeared they die and or 
they dissipate is a you know better way to put it and if we were to look at uh, the second system i mean it it develops right as soon as it, it drops off from the Rockies. You can see that it goes through no or northern Illinois, eastern Iowa area, and then it switches directions, and it still treks and uh, sorry about that treks across the northeast, and and ends up going all the way across the northeast coast. So that's, in my opinion, that's actually something worthy. If pointing out, we haven't seen such an organized little complex in quite a while. I'm not saying, you know, <laughs> that's ridiculous. This is so rare for summer. It's it's not really. I mean, we see these, especially in mid-August. We're starting to get into the fall season. I know it's weird, but at this point, when this thing would be occurring, August 13th, we would be 17 days away. Because I think August has 30 days. So, yes, we would be 17 days away from September 1st, which is meteorolog meteorologically start of fall. Yep, it's that upon us, that quick upon us. Obviously, the temperatures, frost, snow is not going to happen that quickly, but more of these, uh, you know, more of these subtle signs we will be definitely seeing. And you can see that that's only one. And you may be asking, okay, that's just one. If it's not interesting, then why are you showing this to us? Well, you know, I like showing you what in everything, whether it's interesting or not. And the thing that makes this interesting is that there, you know, is a break. Uh, there's a high pressure in charge, but we soon start seeing another one possibly. There you could see uh, right there a more or less disorganized one. That's nothing really noteworthy of. But, I mean, it does evolve into a pretty strong one along the East Coast possibly. This is Sunday, August 18th. There you could see uh, a little bit of circulation, 995. That's fairly strong for a fall system. Notice how also uh, there's a... Uh, there's a uh, low pressure over here that is uh, coming down into the U.S. And while that that is coming down, so let me just draw this out right here quickly. This is very interesting. Low pressure right there. It's a little bit off coast. Those, that blue line right there, that's 32 degree line. I mean, it's still far away. Over here, polar bears live in this area. So that's just to give you perspective. But my main point is low, temp or low pressure right there, spinning the winds uh, counterclockwise. So that's doing so something like that. And the closer it is, obviously, the... Uh, usually the stronger the winds are and you could see that uh, I mean you can see the effects of this Bermuda high it's right over here spinning clockwise you could see the uh, isobars like this and this is why if you put this into motion if you put this into motion this next couple of uh, hours this starts evolving into a pretty big uh, highway I would say for this system look so uh, let, we're at our 288 let's go to the hour 294 Look how quickly this uh, starts, and look how quickly that just speeds. I mean, it's just a line of precip, and it doesn't really move east to west or north to south that much. It moves more from the southeast to the northeast. So that is uh, that is kind of being stable, and uh, that could produce some flooding. And you can see that or just rushes along there. This is it's, It develops at around Monday, uh, late Sunday night. And it's gone from the United States, only leaving behind a cold front on Wednesday. And it's a pretty big system. Uh, notice how, uh, you know, that that was one. And notice how there could also be a tropical storm, but that's so far out. And you can see that that is, you know, that's not going to be any worthy of at this point. And you may be wondering, well, this system, it's also far out. Not really worthy of. Yes, that's true. However... Um, it's the fact that these models are starting to show these type of systems. They're starting to show these type of events starting to occur. These type of, or these type of uh, big waves, and that's 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 basically indicating to us that the models are starting to become more adjusted to the change of seasons. And if we were to look at the northern hemisphere, or sorry, the North Pole, North America as a continent, you'd notice there's a lot of precip over there that is turning into snow uh, into central Canada, which is definitely. Un not unheard of but a little bit uh you know it kind of always catches you by surprise each year let's go to the european model uh european model uh it's a it's an interesting model and it always rarely agree agrees with the gfs but uh we'll still check it out at this point the european model is not showing anything too great i don't think uh but even if it was showing something that was, you know, significant, worthy of, it would be hard to find on this map because this map only is really used for uh, finding the troughs and ridges. It does show those lows, but again, at this point of the year, it 
they're so weak that it's hard to find on them. So I'd have to go on a different um, website. It's called Weather Models, and then I'd have to go to MSL and Pre and Precip, which I could load, but it's going to take quite a while. So I just want to show you based on this. It's still showing around that Tuesday time frame. You could see that. Remember that one that kind of made it all the way across the East Coast? Still showing that low right there. And you can see it's starting to develop right there, that closed in low which we call the closed low, that's when it starts intensifying. And notice it's right there, yep, and it moves off the coast. And then the next one, yeah, you can see it doesn't even go that far, the European model. But also notice how, again, we could be looking at some more warm temperatures, some more heat, so that's noteworthy of. Uh, in terms of, let's go back to the GFS <clears throat> and look at the, <clears throat> the PWET norm anomaly, so that's basically norm anomaly sorry that's basically the total precipitable water in the atmosphere the more green it is the more above average it is in the atmosphere for precip and and for uh in general just uh storms you can see this is the monday tuesday time frame it gets pretty humid or usually it does go hand in hand humidity and high precipitable water uh, especially during the summertime and uh, fall and you can see that it does you can see there's that low and it does bring a whole load of moisture in from the gulf of mexico so uh if i were to show you the humidity it's probably going hand in hand as well uh, the humidity is right here relative humidity all right and you can see that uh, let's go to that tuesday time frame yeah it's also right there not as significant as um as you know maybe i was thinking but you could see that it's definitely still showing a burst of humid air uh, so uh, that's just something i just wanted to show you guys thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you all guys in the next episode see ya bye